大家好, I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huogodawang. If you've been watching the ongoing saga that is Huawei CFO Meng Wangzhou's arrest, you've no doubt noticed an uptick in activity recently. There have been reports that her recent hearings were a victory. As usual though, there wasn't enough emphasis on the Canadian authorities violating Canada law to appease the US in its trade war against China. But another big truth came out. It turns out that some Canadian authorities are living in a video game. Maybe Miss Mung is enjoying eating maple syrup and riding reindeer all day or whatever people in Canada do because she's been stuck there for years. But even if she's enjoying her cold staycation, like the facade that Canada has sovereignty, all dreams eventually come to an end. Perhaps Miss Mung will be allowed to return home a little less excited to go to Canada ever again. Her fate, along with the notion of Canada being a country separate than the United States, rests in part on ongoing court decisions and rulings. Over the last little while, details of those proceedings have seeped out. Various news outlets have had their take on the situation, and I thought it might be prudent to emphasize those things which may have gone unnoticed. The Guardian says her charges won't be dismissed at this time, but the judge did say that Ms. Mung's allegations of misconduct on the part of Canadian authorities have an air of reality to them. That phrase, by the way, doesn't come from the judge's description, but has legal significance. In this case, her allegations against Canadian authorities having an air of reality means, quote, there is a realistic possibility that the allegations can be substantiated. Allegations which do not satisfy this requirement are bald assertions, vague and unsubstantiated suggestions, or mere conjecture or speculation. The attorney general, working against Ms. Mung, tried to get the court to disallow further evidence to be submitted. But let's back up. If you remember from the last video I did about this, Ms. Mung is being accused of lying in a PowerPoint presentation to the excessively corrupt HSBC organization. HSBC is a bank famous for money laundering, sanctions violations, trillions of dollars in suspicious transfers, and other, quote, massively illegal scandals. After this alleged lie in the PowerPoint, the US government ordered Canada to obey them and arrest Ms. Monk. The evidence? The PowerPoint presentation itself, of course, but not all of the presentation. I mean, it's like 20 pages or something. That would be way too much to read. They only sent snippets of the presentation, literally taking things out of context. And Ms. Mung's lawyers are seeking to do the most heinous thing I've ever heard of. That's right. They want the court to allow the whole PowerPoint presentation into evidence. Imagine getting arrested for saying something vaguely in one part of a PowerPoint presentation that you said more clearly in another part of the same PowerPoint presentation. And people out there actively fight to block you from having the entire presentation seen. Well, that's Canada, apparently. Here's the relevant portion of the ruling. Ms. Mung submits that the full PowerPoint should be admitted as evidence in her extradition hearing so that the judge can carry out a meaningful assessment of the reliability of the evidence. It is her position that the full PowerPoint shows that she was not, in fact, untruthful. She contends that the brief, out-of-context summary of the PowerPoint isn't enough to make a valid judgment. And man, do I agree with that. She alleges that the US, quote, deliberately misstated or omitted material evidence. Is there anyone in the world who doesn't see this yet? But luckily, the judge did seem to see that, at least saw the possibility of it, because she, the judge, did allow for Miss Mung to enter more of the PowerPoint into evidence. Not all of it, but at least more of it, which is a good thing. That's called transparency. And I think this latest ruling has got some people over in the US a bit nervous about what happens when they're found to have lied about Ms. Meng to make a case. So now, as CBC reports, Meng Wangzhou will be able to, quote, argue the US tried to trick Canada. Anyone familiar with the details will know what side of the argument is true. The question is, will the Canadian court system find that truth? Honestly, I don't know. But for now, it's good news. And I hate to be sour on a positive note in her case, but remember how she was illegally detained and searched for hours and not read her rights? There are so many people out there who don't understand China and Chinese people, and maybe I'm one of them, but at least I know that, brace yourself for this shock, not all of them are Kung Fu masters. And I didn't think I would have to point this out, but apparently there are Canadian officials who feared for their lives when they're making that highly coordinated, multi-hour illegal detainment. Yep. No, that's the name of a police officer in Canada. Winston. Yep. 
No, I'm saying Winston Yep. That's a name. Anyway, Winston Yep is one of those people who daydreamed about being in his favorite video game, but in real life ended up being a bad cop. Here's what he had to say about why he didn't arrest Miss Mung immediately like he was told to, but instead let her rights be abandoned for hours. But trust him, that's nothing to do with corruption. That's crazy. He doesn't have time for corruption. He's engaged in a fighting tournament to test his might. He said, you can never assume there could be another person. It's just like somebody with a knife. You can't assume a person has only one knife. They might have two, maybe three. You always have to be on guard. Three knives? My God, he's right. Miss Mung could have attacked him with not just a knife in each hand, but one on her head too. Then he was asked, you didn't think for one moment that a 46-year-old international executive was going to come at you with a knife on a plane, did you? This should have shut his weird fantasy down. But when Officer Winston Yep was asked this question and others about Miss Mung, his answers were, well, from another realm. A nether realm, if you will. We have to take into account public safety, police safety. We didn't know who she was actually traveling with and what she was capable of. And the presence of other passengers made it a risky situation. He also made comments like, if something happened, if she puts up a fight, we may have to use physical force. We don't know who she's traveling with, so we may end up fighting other people. Yep, that's right. Yep's years of playing video games had finally paid off. Yep, he, yep knew the truth. Meng Wangzhou was about to unleash some serious kung fu in the business class section of an airplane after a long international flight. And how could anyone possibly know who she was traveling with? I mean, other than checking the ticket purchases, other than that impossible magic, how was Yep to know who was with her? Scorpion? Maybe Noob Saibot was hiding in the overhead luggage compartment. Finally though, Yep got up enough courage to make the arrest conveniently after the multi-hour interrogation was over. See, he isn't the antagonist in this just because he broke protocol in the arrest. He's a courageous warrior who barely survived a triple knife attack, in his mind. And when a Canadian border agent illegally gave Miss Mung's phone and other passwords to the Canadian police, I'm sure somehow he was the victim of that crime too. Every one of the proven, admitted instances of misconduct and illegal activity have been spun to make the officials committing them the victims. Poor Canada. If only this super dangerous knife-laden warrior hadn't forced them to illegally search her, illegally violate her privacy, illegally not read her her rights, and participate in a bogus arrest. In all seriousness though, I don't see how she could not be released given all the widespread accidents that happened during this process. You'd think it would have been done by the book being such a high profile, unprecedented arrest. But then again, if they were playing by the rules, it never would have happened in the first place. So. Who knows? If you're Canadian, let me know what you think about this. Are there laws in Canada? And if so, are you expected to follow them? I've only been there a couple times, so I'm not sure how the judicial system is there. Is it just a free for all where whoever the US pretends to think is dangerous gets arrested and violated, not necessarily in that order? Or is there some remaining semblance of rule of law? Hopefully, Miss Mung's case will continue to reach fair judgments. All I've ever said is she should be treated exactly as anyone else would. Anyone else in this world, that is, not the out world. By the way, I've been getting more and more complaints of people being magically unsubscribed from my channel, so if you're not subscribed, now's the time to do so. Until next time, thanks everybody. See ya. Sindel wins.